In a previous video we talked about SEM image simulation and in this video we're going to talk about SEM image analysis. Um, but I'll briefly talk about SEM simulation just to put this into perspective. The new SEM simulator at Panoramic allows you to form, simulate SEM images. Um, and uh, you want to do this because in practice you can measure only a SEM image. You can't directly measure the resist profile. Instead you make a SEM image and you, and you measure that. Um, with SEM simulation now you can do apples to apples comparisons. You can take a simulated resist feature, produce a SEM image, and then, and then measure this SEM image in the same way that you measure the experimental SEM image using our SEM image and analyzer. Um, so I'll skip to the part of the presentation where we're talking about SEM image measurement. So the measurement can be just as important as the SEM image modeling itself. And this is because the SEM machine, when it makes a measurement, it uses an algorithm that does some smoothing and it, it may not be known to the user what the measurement algorithm is. It, you know, it may decide that the edge is in a different place than you might decide if you looked at it, a SEM image with your eye. Also, the SEM machine isn't very good at m doing other types of fancy measurements. For example, a, um, uh, a measurement of a, a contact or a line end or a tip to end or a tip to tip. But the main thing is, is that we want to be able to use the same measurement algorithm for both simulated and measured SEM images when you're calibrating a resist. That's when you'd want to do that. So the SEM image analyzer is a standalone program that can be used to measure both simulated and uh, measured SEM images. It, it allows you to organize all your images into a project. All the images are, are can have variables that describe their different case, what, which image is which, through focus, through dose, through pitch, through feature and then you can in in a batch mode apply measurements to all of the images you can import images from jpeg uh, png tiff or from hyperlith um, and then once you make cd measurements you can get the results out in a bosung and you can curve fit that bosung curve you can also produce roughness bosungs or ler bosungs well, that would be ler through focus for different doses and there's different algorithms to measure different types of things tip to tip center positions angled measurements uh, roughness all kinds of stuff and uh, again this is a standalone product so um, I'm going to well here's an example in this case we're measuring the line roughness so the SEM image comes in and, and you can place these measurements here and it goes and measures the line at several places and uh, you can produce a, a CD bosung here that's CD versus focus for different doses or in this case this is a roughness or a LWR line width roughness bosung the one sigma LWR versus focus and versus uh, dose so you can see at best focus you have the lowest LWR and out of focus you have a higher LWR. Also for the um, higher dose the LWR goes down and the lower dose the LWR goes up. So in resist calibration if you're going to use if you're going to do resist calibration you really want to make sure that your simulator is doing the same thing that you're doing in real life experiment and that is measuring the CD SEM. Here's an example of a, this is a 22 nanometer dense uh, trench in EUV. And actually, sorry, it's a, it's a dense line at EUV. And if you measure the, the CD from the resist at a particular height, in this case I chose 70% of the height, you get this kind of curve, this kind of bosung with all this curvature. But the same 
set of profiles, if I measure the CD from the SEM simulation, I get this kind of a profile. These bosons look quite different from these bosons. So if you are doing a calibration of resist, you really want to make sure you're using the right model because there's quite a big difference here. So to show you how this works um, from, let's say, from Hyperlith. So here's Hyperlith simulation. And uh, it's an EUV simulation with a line and T. And we're going to be interested in this gap CD. Um, I'm using the stochastic resist model. And in the stochastic resist model, I've specified that I want to duplicate the domain twice in each direction. That way, we have four sites. And um, the output from here, this is just up to this point. So we have the SEM simulator. We're using the SEM simulator, simulator to generate SEM images. And uh, the output of this is a bunch of, uh, is the output tree, which has the resist profiles, the aerial images, and the SEM images. And it also has CD of the SEM images being done at these locations. Now, this is just the, this basic, simple measurement being done at these three sites. And to really do a proper analysis, it's a little bit more than we can handle in Hyperlith. So we're going to use the SEM image analyzer, PAN SIA, to do this. So we'll send this to the SEM analyzer. And so these images, it's asking us to save first. And so now these images come into the SEM analyzer. So this is the SEM analyzer program. And we have a list of all the images. Notice how the images came in, and they're all described or indexed by these variable values, focus and dose. If other variables were present, for example, pitch or gap space or, or any other variables, then you would all the SEM images would have the variables that describe their state. So you can see here that they're already, each SEM image has several measurements on it. These are the measurements that came from Hyperlith. But we are going to remove all these measurements and we're going to add our own more advanced measurement here. And let's, let's note that these images came from the simulation, but they could have easily been imported from a SEM machine. So if you had the, the JPEGs or the PNGs or the TIFFs from your SEM machine, you could import those and there's ways to, to, to get them labeled properly and organized. And if there's some missing, that's okay. And, and that's all right. It just um, There's ways we have all the tools to be able to do that. But in this case, we're working from simulated SEM images. Same thing, simulated or measured, it doesn't matter. So we're going to first clear out all the measurements that are on here. Okay. Then in our templates, we're going to add a tip to edge template. And what we're going to do is there's the tip and there's the line edge. So we're going to measure that area. That'll become clear in a second. Um, so I'll, I'll add this measurement from the templates. I'll add it to, uh, let's pick a particular site. Let's pick the best focus, best dose. And we'll add the tip to edge. So we can add it. Let's add it here. Okay. Um, I've set the position. I'll zoom in. Now you can see that we've got the tip and the edge mixed up. This is the tip and this is the edge. So we'll change the orientation here to 180. So now it's doing a curve fit to find the end of this thing. And it's doing also a curve fit, but just an average. So here it's fitting a parabola. And here it's just fitting a straight line to the edge. So it's tip to edge measurement. and. The thing is, is that we have four instances of this pattern, and we can get RMS info if we um, measure in all those four places. So there's a few other things we need to set here. So the expected CD is around 20. Um, I'm going to have a curve fit tolerance and a gang tolerance. And then we're going to set the gang. So right now, this is one measurement, and then the gang is we're going to add three more. 
So, sorry, this should be at 150. So the first one is 150 over to the right. Then the next one would be 80 up. And then 150 and 80. Okay, so now when we set the position, we're, we have a gang of measurements being made. And so we can see from this that we have different values, 30, 25, 19, 24, so that's actually quite a big RMS there. Um, now we can turn this, let's, let's call this a uh, gap. So we're renaming the measurement and then we'll create a template from this. So now in our templates we have a thing called gap. I'm going to remove the set position because we don't want to set the position when we apply this. So now we're going to apply this template gap that we just created to all of them, all of the same images. So we select, sorry, we select all of them and we say add measurement to selected images. The measurement name is gap and we're going to replace any instances of gap that are already there. And now you see that all of these have been measured um, with that same. So we've applied this to all of the measurements. So now, or all of the same images. So now we will um, export this, the CD measurement to uh, a bosung or get it to data. So we'll say we'll measure the gap and output zero and plot that versus focus. And so here is our CD measurement of our gap. And you can see the noise on it and we can curve fit that. Um, just a few steps to curve fit it. First I have to reshape it into two-dimensional data and then send it to our uh, curve fit. And this is a, a, a there's our curve fit here. So um, but that's not important right now. I want to talk more about the the SEM image analyzer. So we can also have multiple measurements on the same set of SEM images. We could be measuring the line width. We could be measuring the the line uh, the the line width in several places. The roughness on the lines, and all of this can be saved into a project. So. To summarize, the, this program is called PAN-SIA, Pan, Panoramic SEM Image Analyzer. And it can be used to measure both the experimentally measured SEM images or the simulated SEM images from the SEM simulator in Hyperleth. And if you're doing resist calibration and you've got lots of data to process, this is a good tool for that.